During a series of meetings in China, Sean Smith gave words of knowledge to a number of believers. A skeptic at those meetings calculated the odds that a person could randomly guess those details. He concluded that there was no way Sean could have known all those things unless God had been speaking to him. That man prayed with Sean to become a Christian. And as Sean says, it's all because of the power of prophetic evangelism. Author and evangelist Sean Smith has worked in a variety of ministry roles for decades. Along with his wife, he's now the co-director of Sean and Krista Smith Ministries. Sean believes that prophecy can play a key role in bringing people to Christ and shares many examples from his own experience. In his book, Prophetic Evangelism, Sean explains how simply sharing with others what God has shown us can make all the difference. Well, Sean Smith joins us now via Zoom. And Sean, we welcome you to the 700 Club. Thank you. It's an honor to be on the show with you guys. Well, before we get into prophetic evangelism, which is the title of your book, let's get into your story a little bit. Your dad was killed by two police officers. What happened? Uh, when I was about nine years of age, uh, my dad, he didn't live with us at the time. My mom and dad were not together. But I was at school, and I had a, 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 fall, a kind of an emergency that I was supposed to go home because an emergency had happened when I got home. I found out the story. My dad was driving back late one night uh, from work. He saw the cherry go on on a police car. He pulls over to the side of the road. Uh, and then uh, there's stories that the police officers gave. But then what was admitted in court, there were other witnesses that said that the police officers demanded that my dad run. Uh, they sicked the dog on him. They sprayed mace in his eyes. They said had he lived, he would have been blinded and they emptied rounds in his back on arrival. And uh, so when I got this uh, story at nine years of age, it was obviously devastating. Then court case ensued and it was proven in court, it was racially motivated. Although I honor police officers and I, I, I anyone that sticks their uh, life on the line, uh, these police officers were not honorable and, and the situation really had a, a, a marking upon my life. Oh, I can't even imagine. You say that you shut down after your dad's death. Tell us what was going on with you. You know, it's it, it's funny because I think in this world, we, we see this orphan spirit, and it, I believe it spawns so much lawlessness, violence, particularly what we're seeing today, immorality. I feel like in my high school years, uh, it began to catch up with me. I think I, I was just kind of did that really happen when I was nine and 10. But by high school, I'm in immorality, uh, just trying to find my identity in my college uh, as the kids would say, I was wilding out and just definitely in need of, of intervention. But then in college, you had an experience with Jesus. What happened there? Now, this, Jerry, this is amazing, right? Uh, I, I cried out one night after a night of partying. Uh, it was kind of a threefold plan. In the first part, I was going to party, which I did. Third part, I was going to commit suicide, which obviously is, is never a solution. The second part of the plan is I was going to call on my grandmother's Jesus so in this college studio apartment, I said, Jesus, if you're real, I want to experience you. And if you let me experience you, I'll give you everything. And, and this is where I can lose some people. But I think, you know, years later, I'm doing what I'm doing and not pursuing a profession in computer engineering where my degree is. Jesus shows up in my room. I see Jesus. I, I can describe him. It's like John wrote Revelation. His eyes were like lightning. His face was like the sun shining. And he spoke to me. He said, I'll be a father of the fatherless. Well. I, I broke, I wept, uh, immediately surrendered everything to Christ, obviously didn't take my life. I began to witness to everything that moved on my college campus and was really in the midst of a move of God, but it was at the intervention of God by showing up that made all the difference. You were actually able to forgive the men who had killed your father. How did that happen? You know, this is a, a very interesting thing, particularly in the backdrop of what we've seen over the last couple of years, uh, in that moment, when Jesus showed up in my room, I so felt the agape love of God, that God kind of love, that it uh, it seemed inconsistent to withhold phileo love from anyone of any color, any pigmentation, even those uh, that may share the same race as the police officers that murdered my dad. And I felt such love. People said, was it hard to forgive? Uh, it's a choice, but really the love of God was so immense I prayed for these police officers. I, I was never allowed to go to the court trials, and, and my mom made a good decision on that at nine years of age. 
But I, I pictured these police officers. Uh, it was on local news and stuff. I pictured the police officers. I pictured their families. I said, Lord, I forgive them. And I pray, God, that uh, the same grace and love that hit his, his touch my life, uh, you would do the same in theirs. And, and that, that event right there is one of those divine moments. I, I wouldn't be able to do what I do today had it not been that point of releasing that, that unforgiveness. Well, releasing that unforgiveness released the power of God in your life. You write about what you call prophetic evangelism. What is that? Prophetic evangelism uh, is a supernatural reception of the mind and emotions of God over a particular person or situation. And we can see it used, Jesus used it, for, for instance, in John chapter 1, when uh, Philip brought his friend Nathaniel, Jesus said, behold, a man in whom there's no guile. Well, he had never met Nathaniel before, and Nathaniel was skeptical. He said, can anything good come out of Nazareth? But the moment Jesus said that, Nathaniel said, how do you know me? When, when you receive this supernatural download of God, and God is always speaking to us about people around us because he is redemptocentric, which means he loves to draw people to himself. That is, God is showing you the situations and circumstances in people's life. What it does is, is exactly what Nathaniel said in John chapter one. He says, how do you know me? Prophetic evangelism causes people to feel known by God. And it is, it is a way in which God so many times people do, I guess, programmatic evangelism. Nothing wrong with that. You're sharing the gospel. That's awesome. Programmatic says I have a system, and no matter who's in front of me, I'm going to share based on this system. But prophetic evangelism says I'm going to tune into the nudges of Holy Spirit, and I'm going to speak what the Holy Spirit has directed me as to tailor make my uh, appeal to their hearts based on the mind of God and not just upon my mind and my current circumstance. So I've seen it be so profound. So Sean, when I introduced you, I said that there was a man who was at this conference that you were at who came as a doubting Thomas and then watched this prophetic evangelism at work. I think the thing people always ask with something like this is, how can you be sure that it's from God? You know, here's the thing, I think, it, it, the Bible says we prophesy by faith. So when it comes to hearing the voice of God, I think number one, obviously, it helps to know the God of the Word. So that happens by spending time in prayer, reading His Word. God's going to speak consistent to what the Word of God says in Scripture, uh, according to His character. But when it really comes down to it, it requires a risk. You have to step out. And many times I've, I've stepped out in the past. I write even in the book. There were some times when I missed it, but here's what I, I feel is so important. If you focus in your heart the love of the Father towards the person in front of you, and that's where I feel like prophetic evangelism begins, uh, it begins in the quiet secret space, because I say the secret place is the training place for the marketplace. But if I focus the love of the Father on the person in front of me, invariably God's going to reveal something. And 1 Corinthians 14, 1 says, follow the way of love yet eager to desire spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. And I think when you allow that love to flow in your heart, you've spent time, you're in his word. And here's the thing. We know there are three possible sources. There's either, either you're, you're hearing from God, you're hearing from man or the, the world around us, or you're hearing from the devil. The devil never wants us to witness. So we can kind of eliminate that. The question is right now, is it me or is it God? And after a while, you sense God's voice has a certain weight to it that's different than ours. And there is an anointing and a presence that associates uh, with his words that you can begin after a while go, I'd, I'm pretty sure that's the voice of God there. Yeah. I want to say that your book explains it all. <clears throat> We've had such a short time together today, but you can learn more from Sean in his book, Prophetic Evangelism, Tactics for Signs, Miracles, and Wonders in Your Everyday Life. The book is available nationwide. Sean, thank you for being with us today. The Lord bless you. Hey, Lord, blessings on you guys. Thanks so much for having me. Uh -huh.